All right, so we're now ready to add the logic, the JavaScript, to our quiz. So let's go to script.js. All right, and let's just make sure that everything is linked okay. I want to make sure that our style, um, I'm sorry, our JavaScript file is being read. So I'm just going to put an alert, okay? So what we need to do is if we look at the HTML and we look at the form tag, we're saying on submit, we want to return a function called submit answers. All right, so we want to create that function. So we'll do function submit answers. All right. Now, the first thing I want to do is just set um, a couple variables. All right, so I want to set the total number of questions. Okay, so we'll have a variable called total, and that's going to be set to five. And basically, this will be used when the results are shown. Okay, so if you get four out of five, that five is going to come from this total. All right, um, and we want to set the score. And of course, we're going to set that to zero before anybody does anything. All right, um, next we want to get the user input. Whoops. Okay, so get the user input. We're going to create some variables, say, so Q1. And the way that we're going to target this is we're going to use the form and the actual field names. All right, so if we look at our form, it has the name of quiz form. All right, and then the first input here has a name of uh, Q1, which all of these should be. Okay, so this is actually wrong. These all should be Q1, just like these are all Q2, Q3. All right, so we know which question we're talking about. Um, and also the IDs here, this is also wrong. This should be Q1, A, B, C, and D. Sorry about that. Hope that didn't mess you up too bad. Uh, so Q1A, Q1B, C and D. All right, and these are right because I just pasted those in. So I'm going to save that and then go back to the script and we're going to say document dot forms. Okay, so basically this here is going to grab all the forms on the page and we don't want that in case there wasn't uh, uh, two forms on the page. So we want to use the name of the form quiz form and then also grab the input with the name of Q1. All right, and then we need the value, so we're going to say dot value. All right, now it'll get us whatever the user types into, I'm sorry, selects for question one. Okay, so I'm going to copy this and we want five of these and change this to Q2, three, four, and five. Same thing here. Two, three, four, whoops, and five. All right, let's do a little test here and just do an alert. We'll just alert Q1. So this will give us, this will alert whatever the user checks for question one. All right, so we'll check on B, submit, and it's going to give us the value, which is B. Okay, C, uh, wait a minute. C. All right, C and D. All right, good. So that's that's settled. Uh, we're getting the user input, putting it in the correct variables. Now what we want to do is do a little bit of validation because um, right now, let's go ahead and just uh, get rid of that alert. And if we reload and we submit, it's submitting the form. Uh, but it's letting us submit it without having anything checked and we don't want that. All right, so we're going to do some very, very basic validation. When you build real applications, uh, you want to have really solid validation on both the client side and the server side if you're using uh, PHP or some kind of server side language. All right, so what we're gonna do is just do some if statements. So we're gonna say if Q1 is equal to null, okay, which is basically nothing, or, okay, so the or, we use these double pipes, okay. 
you also could just say or, um, but I always use the pipe characters. Uh, question one is equal to nothing. Okay, so just bl just blank quotes. All right. Then what do we want to do? We want to alert the user, and we're just going to say you missed. Oops, you missed question one. All right, and then we just want to return false. We don't want the form to submit. And this equal sign should actually be a double equal. All right, so let's go ahead and test this out. So if we go ahead and submit without checking answer uh, question one, we get a you missed question one. And you can see it's not going to submit. All right, so we want to do that for all of the questions. All right, so if we do select one from question one, it goes ahead and submits. Now, what we want to do is inside of the function at the end, we want to make sure that we return false because we're not actually submitting the form. All right, when you submit a form, it usually will go to like a PHP file or some kind of server uh, server side file that can actually process it. When you're using JavaScript, you're catching that that submission before it actually goes through. All right, and that's what we're doing with this on submit. Okay, we're, we're catching it in submit answers. And if we just let it go through without returning fault, it's going to just submit the try submitting it to um, wherever. All right, so return false will stop that from happening. Okay, so moving on um, to for our validation, we have five questions. So what we would do is do this five times and then change this to two, this to three, and so on. But that is uh, very repetitive and definitely something that should be put inside of a loop instead of having this five times. Okay, so what we're going to do is get rid of these two and we're going to create a loop. Okay, so we'll do the loop right under it and then we'll get rid of this. All right, so we're going to use a for loop. Okay, so we want to say for and a for loop takes three parameters. The first, we're going to set a variable. So we're going to set i equal to one and then a semicolon. All right, the next parameter is going to be the condition. So we want to say as long as i is less than or equal to the total number of questions. Uh, and then the last parameter is going to be an increment. So it's going to be i plus plus, which is going to just increment it by one. All right, so the first run through, i is going to be equal to 1, and then it'll run again, and then i will be equal to 2, then 3, then 4, then 5, and then it won't match this condition anymore. It's not going to be less than or equal to 5, so it'll stop. All right, so what we want it to do is basically this right here. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this, and then paste it right in here. All right, so right now, what it's going to do is it, it's just it's going to loop five times, but it's going to check this condition over and over for five times. And the condition is Q1 is equal to null or Q1 is equal to nothing. And we don't want that. We want it to test Q1 the first time, then Q2, 3, 4, and 5. All right, so what we need to do here is we can't just say QI and replace it like this. All right, that's going to look for a variable called QI. So we need to use the eval function, which will help us uh, make this actually say Q1. All right, so what we need to do is say eval. Whoop. Eval, and then inside here we want Q. Okay, so the letter Q, and then we want to concatenate on a one. I'm sorry, an I. All right, so this here will give us Q1 the first time and then 2, 3, 4, and 5. All right, so let's just copy that and also put that right here. All right, and then it's going to say, you missed question 1. We don't want that five times. We want the I, so we're just going to concatenate on with the plus sign the I variable. Okay, and then return false is good. So let's go ahead and try that. Okay, so if we reload and I try to submit, you missed question one. 
Okay, so we'll fill in question one. You miss question two, three, four, and five. All right, and then finally it'll let us submit. All right, so the next thing we want to do is set our answers. All right, so I'm going to do that using an array. Set answer. Actually, we should say set correct answers. All right, so we can do this with var answers, and then we're going to set it to an array, and then we're going to set the answers. All right, for instance, if the first question, the answer is B. Whoop. B. All right, the second question, the answer is A. Okay, you want to put all the correct answers. So A, B, D, B, and D. Okay, so this is the answers array. What we want to do now is check the answers. All right, so we'll say if, whoop, we'll say if Q1 is equal to answers zero. Now remember, arrays always start with zero. All right, so this here is actually gonna be answers zero. This one will be answers one two, three, and four, okay? Arrays always begin with zero. So what we're gonna do if that's correct, if it's the correct answer, we're gonna take the score variable, which right now is zero, and we're gonna increment it one. All right, so basically if they get this right, their score will increase by one. And we wanna do this for every question. So if we take this, Two, three, four, and five. All right, so this would be one, two, three, four, and then this would be question two, three, four, and five. And then down here, for now, let's just do the alert. Okay, and what we're going to alert is a string. We'll say you you scored, and then we want to concatenate on the score. Okay, so plus, and then the score variable. Uh, you scored something out of, and then here we want to concatenate the total. Put a space here. All right, so let's see if this works. Okay, reload. I'm just going to choose anything. You scored three of three out of five. All right. So let's try to get them all right. So script. This one is src. Alert. False. No. Scored five out of five. All right, so it's working. Now this code here is also very repetitive, so I want to uh, try and put this in a loop as well. So I'm going to take this same for statement here and put it here, and then take this. Okay, get rid of these. All right, so as it is now, it's gonna check Q1 through every iteration. So we wanna get the correct variable, so we can use the same eval function we used up here. And just replace that. All right, now, we can't just simply put i here because the i is starting as one, all right, and the array starts at zero, so it won't be matching up. We'll be checking Q1 um, against one if we just put I here. So what we need to do is put I take away one. 
okay so that way it'll give us zero all right when it's question two it'll look at the answer in the one position which is here and so on so let's save that and give that a try okay so let's say right 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 and then we'll, we'll choose one wrong so submit and you can see now we have four out of five all right so we're pretty much there uh, the last thing I want to do is I just want to insert the results onto the page as well so down here above the alert let's put a comment display results and I'm going to say variable results is equal to document dot get element by ID and the ID that we want to get is results all right and then we want to take that variable results and set the HTML so we can do dot inner HTML okay and we can set that to whatever we'd like um, we're going to have an h3 say you you scored and then have a span and then we want to concatenate the score variable okay and then we'll put the closing span and then we'll do out of and then we want the total wrapped in the span as well total span and then the closing h3 and then a quote okay And it looks like we, we need to uh, make sure that this returns false at the end. I thought I already did that, but I must have deleted it. All right, so let's go ahead and try that. So we'll reload. Okay, submit. We still get the alert. And then at the top, we get you scored five out of five. All right, so that's it. Our quiz is complete. We have a very uh, minimal amount of code here, especially since we've used those loops. Uh, we only have 36 lines. So uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next project.